Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a night video for you. Today we're taking a look at the Spyderco Siren. Now this is one of the anticipated knives of the year for me because to me it just looked like a rust proof utility knife. Like this was a knife that could really work, had a great grip, you know, G10 backs with a back lock. Um, to me this looked like a great knife. And uh, it is, I will say this at the start, very purpose built, okay? This is not to, designed to necessarily be an EDC knife. It's designed by Lance Clinton, who's a professional kayak fisherman, uh, which I'm pretty sure is totally a made up thing. But if kayak fishing as a profession did exist, this would really be the knife for it. And, and look, I've got to say, uh, apparently, you know, we've reached the point in human development where we can just take two leisure activities, kind of put them together, and that becomes our profession. So, you know, I, you know, when I grow up, maybe I'll be a yo-yoing biker um, or a or a baseball playing um, artist. <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't know, but uh, I would love to hear what your, uh, you know, what your dream profession would be down below based on, you know, taking a couple hobbies, sticking them together and calling that a profession. Uh, and, and look, if you can do it, if you can take your hobby and make it into your job, hey, you're, you win at life. So more power to you. Um, by the way, I should also add at this point that, you know, making these very discipline specific knives is a real really, really cool and unique thing that Spyderco does, right? Spyderco, they have a whale rescue knife, right? So that's a knife just built for cutting whales out of fishing lines for, you know, what, the hundred people that do that in real life. Uh, that's really, really cool that Spyderco makes this kind of stuff. And every once in a while, it really just works. And so, you know, if you're a, I don't know, professional albino ferret trainer, you know, send your knife design to Spyderco. They'll probably make a, a ferret training knife that's specifically designed for albino ferrets. And then th it'll become part of their lineup. And I'll be talking about you sometime down the road, uh, which is, you know, kind of cool. And, and I think this is one of those examples of a knife from Spyderco that really does work. Okay, so size and weight, let's let's start there because I think while this is, yes, a very discipline specific knife, the things that are needed for that discipline are also needed for a lot of other things. And so I think a lot of people will find this worthwhile. Uh, size and weight, I won't spend a lot of time on this. The knife is eight and 11 sixteenths overall, three and nine sixteenths on the blade, so a bit over three and a half inches. Five and one eighth is the closed length there. So five and one eighth. In terms of grip area, we have three and a half inches. And this weighs in at a measly 3.4 ounces. So very lightweight. Uh, and in terms of size and weight and how easy this is to carry, uh, I think this is a win. You know, it's a little tough getting it in a pocket, but with, with that comes, it's also a little tough to get this out of your pocket and thereby lose it. And so again, very purpose built, but a lot of the things that it does in order to be able to be carried around water and to not be a problem when it's wet is, you know, that's just, even if you're not a kayak fisherman, that's a great feature to have in a knife. So size and weight, huge win. Uh, let's move over to the blade. So the blade is a satin drop point with those really, really attractive Spyderco grind lines. Golden Colorado, USA Earth, you can see that there. Uh, over on this side, you can see the LC200N and there's your little spider for you. But uh, really, really nicely balanced blade. So this is a pretty stocky, you know, it's you know about an eighth of an inch thick, so nothing to sneeze at, yet it's ground thin enough that this will slice really, really well for you. LC200N is a great steel. It's a great combination of, you know, being rust proof, but also being no slouch when it comes to edge retention. So, you know, <laughs> To me, this is quite a win, right? What do you want out of a knife blade? Well, I don't want it to rust and I want it to hold an edge. And so LC200N is a great option for most knife users. And it's especially good for those of us. If you're like me, you know, I've told you guys the story about the shorts where <laughs> I've got these shorts that I've been wearing a lot that have mesh pockets. And that means all of your sweat and humidity kind of gets all over your knife. And I have had it cause rust on some of my knives. So this knife, you know, if you're doing anything a little bit strenuous, 
continuous and there's going to be a lot of sweat involved. Such a win. Um, not only that, but on fire calls. I've had a few knives. If you go on a fire call, right, think about it. You're wearing whatever you're going to be wearing that day and then you're going to put a snowsuit on. You're going to work hard for sometimes hours on end. And having a knife in your pocket that won't rust is again a huge win in that situation. Um, the blade here is definitely reminiscent. Really, the whole knife is very rep reminiscent of a butcher's knife or a fillet knife, although the blade is not flexible. Okay, you're not getting any bend there, and some people do like that for their fillet knife. Not everyone, uh, and you know, fillet knives and boning knives, you can buy them in flexible and non flexible blades. This one is definitely non-flexible, and I've just got to say at this point, and this is a bit of a you know a rabbit trail I'm going to chase down here. But when I was a kid, my dad used to take me to um, this uh, knife processing plant, or wow, this fish processing plant. And this was, you know, I was a little kid. They had the fish would come in normally from you know both fishing tugs, but also from fishermen who just caught large volumes of fish, and you could pay. And they would fillet all your fish for you. And a couple of times we did it, me and my dad. And they had these women there who were working at a table sort of in a line. And it was incredible to watch them work. To me as a little kid, it looked like, you know, something out of a ninja movie where, you know, you throw the thing in the air and the ninja waves his sword around and then the pieces come out exactly right. It really did look like that. Like these women could fillet a perch in like three seconds. And, you know, it just, it literally looked like a fish, whole fish came in one side and then they wave the knife around and a fillet would shoot out, guts would shoot out the other side. And it was really incredible to watch. So, uh, uh, a, a cool looking fillet knife is kind of, you know, harkens back to some childhood memories. Overall, look guys, this blade is really nice. It's great for its intended purpose, which is, you know, sort of that water fishing type of role, but also it's a decent EDC blade. Like it's, it's just a full flat ground drop point blade, which is highly utilitarian. So a uh, really, really nice option there from the blade. All right, let's move over to the action here. Uh, this is a Spyderco lockback. So not a triad lock, but still a very good lock and always quite satisfying. The Spyderco lockbacks that I've had, uh, with the exception of the Enduro, which I'm not in love with, the especially these thicker Spyderco lockbacks where I feel like they pay a little more attention, it's just really, really nice. Very satisfying deployment. Uh, and this is a fidgety knife, even though it's it's not fidgety in the same way. Can't spider flick it. Thought I'd give it a try there for you guys on camera. Now it's not it's not fidgety in the same way that a pair of two is fidgety. All right, but it's it's fidgety and satisfying nonetheless. Okay, uh, and so you know I have no problem with the action here. Uh, I will say the odd times. See now this time it's locked up very solid, but every once in a while when it locks up, whether it's that I haven't you know deployed it hard enough or whatever the case may be, I get a teeny bit of movement. Now when I'm using this, I can't notice it. I can only notice it sort of when I'm when I'm doing something like this, where I'm you know purposely kind of grabbing the tip of the blade and see if I get a little bit of movement. There is a little bit of tick there from time to time. It's not there every single time I deploy the knife. And I don't really notice it when I'm cutting stuff. So uh, for those reasons, I can forgive that little bit of movement, although it's it's there and I want to make mention of it. Uh, and hopefully, you know, it, it may be just my knife that does that. I've never heard anyone mention that uh, in any other reviews. Uh, so moving on now to the handle. We have here a very comfortable, very grippy handle. And I mean very, very grippy. This is not a knife you're going to lose. All right, even if you're all wet, even if you're, you know, processing fish or working by water or whatever the case may be, this is very, very solid in hand. Of course, the G10 handle with those blue liners really, really looks sharp. Uh, very aggressive texturing, you know, reminiscent of a Recon 1. Uh, and then we have the movable wire clip. All things that I appreciate. By the way, notice the construction here. The uh, Torx screws go into uh, these uh, sort of fittings on the other side to accommodate a full G10 handle. I really like the way that they've done that. Uh, lanyard hole is not obtrusive. It is there if you need it. Uh, and then otherwise Torx construction. So uh, again, uh, you know, we've got a comfortable handle that's very grippy, uh, probably too grippy for some. I, you know, I, the same group that complained about the, the Recon 1 will complain a little about this. But, but remember, this is designed for a purpose, right? This is for someone who's going to be boating and, you know, specifically kayaking. So you can't have a knife that has any possibility of all at all of coming out of your pocket. And this definitely can not. Okay. So lockup and deployment is great. 
handle construction and ergonomics again very good very comfortable and you've got that big deep choil so there's no way even if this knife was you know totally soaked or you're covered in blood from skinning enamel whatever the case may be you're not slipping up onto this blade so very very good from that perspective as well all right moving on now we've talked about the blade we've talked about the lockup and deployment we've talked about the handle let's make oh by the way uh, I did will notice that clip does work quite well. I did notice it not coming out of the pocket well, but it goes in quite nicely. Let's go ahead and get to some comparisons. First off, I tried to find all my lockbacks here. So here is my Manix 2 lockback. I love this knife. Uh, similar feel in that it's you know just got that really precise feeling lock so satisfying when it engages so again huge win from spederco i like the ergonomics on this guy just a little bit more obviously you know it's not lc 200 n and by the way spederco this pattern right here with this textured g10 and an lc 200 n blade and you know built the way this guy is built is a winning pattern please give me a couple of other designs like this i don't you know it doesn't have to be a manix 2 lockback but you know, whatever other knife designs you can come up with, maybe ones that are a little more EDC friendly, maybe ones that don't have this deep choil, whatever the case may be, I do think this is sort of a winning combination. Give me the G10, give me the LC200N, give me a lock back, I, and I'm going to be quite impressed. Uh, let's throw in a pair of two here. Again, a spider Co that everyone is familiar with. Uh, that'll at least give you a, a, an idea of where this lands in terms of size. Uh, it is a little lighter than the pair two, which is very, very impressive. Uh, thinking of lockbacks, you can't talk about lockbacks without bringing in a couple of cold steels. So there's a Recon 1 S35VN satin blade here. Uh, not going to be as corrosion resistant as corrosion resistant. However, a lot of other things that this knife does, this will do. So if you're looking to save yourself a little bit of money, uh, you can go to the Recon 1. You're going to get a very grippy, very capable knife that's pretty darn corrosion resistant. Like S35VN is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, and it's not going to cost you, I think, the 170 bucks or so that this guy goes for. Now, while we're talking about that, um, you know, charging that kind of money for a well-made lockback is not outlandish. Remember this guy, the AD-10 goes for like 190 bucks. So uh, it's not completely out of the ballpark, especially considering the LC-200 and steel, which does make this very purpose-built for... Um, you know, that, that sort of water type of roll. Now here in contrast is the knife you don't want to have when you when rust is a potential issue. This guy's got the D2 steel, which is not a stainless steel. Uh, but I wanted, thought, I, thought I'd throw a Rat Model 1 in here just because everyone is very familiar with the Rat Model 1. Okay, now, having gotten our comparisons out of the way, what are my final thoughts on this knife? You know, the first thing I've got to say is I understand that this knife is not going to be for everybody, but if you fit into this category, okay, if you're someone who wants a knife that has a great steel, that can't rust, that holds a decent edge, if you want a handle that is very positive grip and will not slip out of your hand no matter what you're doing, if you want a knife that is going to grip into your pocket and not come out, uh, if you want a knife that's comfortable to work with, that's extremely lightweight and yet very capable, uh, then this might be a good option for you. Um, you know, are there other options out there that can fit most of those bills? Yeah, but this one is a little more specialized and a little more interesting. And so I think that has to be taken into consideration as well. Uh, if you haven't figured it out yet by this point, uh, yeah, I think this is a real win from Spyderco. I really like this knife. Uh, you know, I, I like the fact that it's got that LC200 and steel. I like the fact that it's lightweight, that it's really designed to be a working knife. It's not doing anything fancy. It just functions the way you want a knife to function. And so, uh, you know, yes, it's very specialty built, but it can still work as a really nice EDC, especially if you, you know, are in that extra moist environment. I know moist is everyone favorite word to hear on the internet especially my prime minister justin trudeau he uh, you know if you're really speaking moistly then this might be the knife for you all right guys thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe don't forget to check out southern edge knife works where this came from big shout out to them thank you so much for sending this along it's a fantastic offering uh, and i think you know just i hope this one sticks around in spider Co's lineup for a while despite the fact that it's a little bit specialized there you go, guys. Thanks for watching once again, and we will talk to you soon.